Well, good morning, and for those on this side of the world, it's sweet December. And you may wonder what that's all about. Well, that's the kind of what we do over in the Ketchin State in Myanmar. We December 1st is the beginning of the Christmas month where we share one with another. Sweet December, and may you have a happy sweet December, because they... The whole month of December is to celebrate uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, his birth and that. And so uh, we've been getting emails already. Sweet December, everybody celebrating sweet December. <laughs> We're just so glad to be with you. And it's unique that today as we look at our 10th point uh, concerning heaven uh, under the whole area of the gospel of Christ, uh, the doctrine of Christ. We're looking at the doctrine of Jesus Christ, and then we're looking at kind of a the principle in there called the gospel, in our book called the principle of faith. And the last point in those uh, ten points is about heaven. And uh, so we're just so glad that you're with us. Uh, I want to let you know, uh, as for the month of sweet December, we're going to change up things, adjust things, and stuff like that. So we're not going to go through the principle of faith for the for the month of December. And it's just going to be sporadic. It, uh, there'll be different times that I'll just be sharing a little thing, sharing miracles, sharing. It's just going to be more of a uh, more of a reflection time and a testimony time or whatever. But there won't be key days either. So today is our last uh uh, day of going through the principles of faith until we move into January. We've got a busy, busy time in the mall. Things are happening. We've got God is providing more staff. We're up to now, I think, at least 10 volunteers that are going to be coming in for the month of December to share the good news and the faith of Jesus Christ in the mall. And again, we're praying uh, next week we will begin to put into the mailboxes over 15,000 uh, the, the Christmas booklets, and so that will go into 15,000 different homes and then another 5,000 through the mall. Wow. And we just had a wonderful Christmas get together last night where we just had fellowship. There was 38 of us that got together that have been working together uh, with Project Lambs. What a wonderful time that was yesterday, too. And, uh, and so now. We're also going to talk about heaven today. That's the last point of the 10 that we put down for the good news. Amen. I mean, isn't it good news that we get to go to heaven? I don't know if anyone is still talking about that anymore. We used to sing hymns about heaven. We used to, you know, uh, talk and have teaching and preaching on heaven. But there's not much about that. But let me tell you, it's part of the good news. I don't know about you, and I know uh, Paul thought about it too. He said, you know, uh, in many ways, he said, I'd rather be up there than down here. But for the sake of the people, I'm, we're still here. But wow, we get to look forward to that wonderful time of being in heaven. And we need to get out on the highways and byways. And we need to, you know, can you imagine if we could just all get out and say, don't worry about preaching or teaching anything else. Just teach and preach on these 10 points. I was thinking about that last night. We could just teach and preach over and over again about these 10 points and say, hey, I got some good news for you. And they say, well, what's that? Well, Jesus died for you. I got some other good news for you. Jesus came to to be with man and to not only be the Son of God, the Son of Man, but he is also here so that we live amongst us so that he could die for our sins and be resurrected. I got some good news, you know. Jesus, uh, you know, ascended on high. I got some more good news. What's that? You give me how much good news can a guy take him one day? Well, you can say, well, the whole, I got some more good news. God sent forth the Holy Spirit to empower us. And some more good news, you know, uh, Jesus birthed forth his wonderful church. And then you go on and say, but the good news didn't stop there. What's that? Well, he's coming back again. He loves us so much. He's coming back again for his bride. And if they go, oh, is there any more? And yeah, there is more. We got heaven. Think about that. You know, we don't have to do all kinds of things to, to get into heaven. We just got to believe in Jesus Christ, believe in him and that he was sent by the Father and that he is establishing uh, the kingdom of heaven in a greater way for us. And now and soon and very soon, 
we get to go to heaven and be with him. I mean, what a wonderful, wonderful time that will be. What a time of rejoicing, the Bible says, you know, uh, and throughout. And this is what the Pharisees and the Sadducees fought, fought over all the time. Can you imagine? And Jesus used that in his teaching. The Pharisees believed in, he in heaven and the Sadducees didn't because they didn't believe there was such a thing as heaven. And so, you know, I can understand why they would be sad, why they'd be grumpy. And I got thinking, you know, I think there's a lot of Christians that belong to the Sadducee party. You say, well, I didn't know there was such a, uh, such a political party. Yeah, in the church, we got the Pharisees party. We got the Sadducee party, too. You know, they're just sad. You know? <laughs> but the thing is, we got to realize we believe in heaven. Can you say amen to that? We believe in the good news of heaven. <laughs> Can you say amen to that? Do you believe that someday you're going to go to heaven because of your faith in Jesus Christ? And hopefully you will say amen to that. While heaven is talked about, we always start off with the good news of looking into prophecy. And in Deuteronomy 10.14, and, the, and way back then, in Deuteronomy 10.14, it says, Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God, also the earth with all that is in it. And so here, you know, Moses is, is telling the people, you know, <laughs> indeed. He says, you know, this idea of indeed, really get to know, get to understand something that, uh, get this truth. And what's this truth? Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens. So talking about the, you know, there's levels of heaven and the highest heaven. What about it? It all belongs to the Lord. There's nothing evil there. There is nothing that's going to, is destructive there. You know, it all belongs to the Lord and where the Lord is. You know, there is peace, there is there is mercy and grace. Oh, praise God. Isaiah goes on and says, Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? Again, a prophetic word that's given forth in a question, where it says, you know, Thus, thus says the Lord, the Lord says this through the Isaiah, through the prophet, where he says, heaven is my throne. You know, I don't know if you've ever got a chance to see a throne room or not, or ever understand about the whole area of the throne room. But praise the Lord. You know, we need to understand that, that the Lord has a throne room, you know. Praise God. I, this is how Bobby Mitchell show up. Good to see you. We're keeping you in prayer, Bobby. Keep on keeping on for Jesus. Tell people about heaven. <laughs> I know you do. And then Daniel seven thirteen to 14, he says, I was watching in the night vision, Daniel says, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He will come and ascend of the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given the dominion and glory and the kingdom, and that all the people, nations, language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. This is what Daniel saw. He saw in a vision heaven. <coughs> Excuse me. And then Malachi three ten. Again, we talked about yesterday the Daniel one about you know his his kingdom, his heaven. But here is he comes back from the heaven. Malachi three ten says, "Bring all the tithes into the storehouse." Now here it talks about tithing, giving unto the Lord. Bring all the tithes back into the storehouse, that there may be good food or be food in my house, and try me now. In this, says the Lord of hosts, or the commander and king. This Lord of hosts, this title is used, as we've talked about over and over again. It means the commander of, of the armies of God. You know, say the Lord of hosts, if, I, if it will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive. So even the blessings of God, can you imagine? We're, we're sending up treasures in heaven, and I share this on Sunday, but God is sending the treasures back down from heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is a blessing. And I love it that it says, uh, Malachi prophesies this, and, you know, that the Lord would open up the windows of heaven. 
And we'll pour out a blessing, you know, for those who are giving unto the Lord, for those who are giving themselves, for those who are giving in a tithe. The, the context here is a tithe. You know, a portion of that God has given to us, you know, we're giving back to the Lord. And the Lord says, don't you know that when you do that, it's, a, it's sad when people don't tithe and, and, and give of, of what they have been given by the Lord. It's sad that they don't, you know, invest it in heaven. You know, people will say, well, you don't know how poor I am. And, but I've been to poor countries. I've been to places that, you know, it might just be a widow's mite that they put in. But Jesus said, you know, that one, that one lady put in more today than all the rest of you. But we need to be putting in. We need to be investing in treasures. We need to be taking that which we have, that tithe and offering, and giving it unto the Lord. Because God's going to take that. And isn't it interesting? He's going to take that where the windows of heaven will be opened up and a blessing will pour forth. Oh, I could tell you of so many blessings, you know. As we've gone and planted these, or beginning to plant these Christmas seeds and to plant the gospel of hope and then the plant the one on discipleship, God is opening up the windows of heaven. Praise God for that. And that's what we need to be doing and, and, and investing and, and planting. These are seeds, you know, this tithe is a seed. But other things that we do are seeds. What we do physically are seeds. You know, what we, how we serve one another is seeds. And out of that, God wants to send forth a blessing. And where is it coming from? From heaven. God himself wants to cheer us on and say, hey, well done. <laughs> See that? That's my child. Praise the Lord for what's going on there. But then we go into Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. And you should know, if you got time, and you should take time, Matthew is, he's really been led by the Holy Spirit to say, you know, and to teach about the kingdom of heaven. Oh, you know, I, I wish we would have a number of days. And I mean, we'll get back to it somewhere along the line when we talk about heaven, because we it's one of our theological sections in the principles of faith, is that we need to understand more about heaven. You know, we talk about all the things that the devil is going to do in the end times, but we don't talk about the, the greatest good news in the end times. You know, people walk up to me and they, and, they, and they say, you know, they talk about the end times and all the events of the end times, and I like to stop them. I, I don't. I try to be generous, but I like to stop them and say, you know, one of the greatest things that we should be talking about concerning the end time is not all what the devil is going to do and all what the beast is going to do. We should be talking about Hey, we get to go to heaven. We have some good news here. What's that? You know what? Oh, what's going on? There's soon and very soon we're going to be in heaven. And Matthew 3, you know, Matthew, he was, uh, you know, the tax collector, the guy that comes to know Jesus. God puts it upon him to use that idea of the kingdom of heaven, you know, over and over again. And the eternal eternalness, if there's such a word of the kingdom of heaven. And Matthew 3, 2 says, and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Get things right. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, the, the word of God, Jesus exhorts you in the word of God, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that means that we're going to be close. We're, we're very close to coming to the place of being with our Lord Jesus Christ for all eternity. Luke fifteen seven says, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over sinners who repent than over 99 just pr uh, persons who need no repentance. <clears throat> you know, it talks about the one. It talks about, just as in Matthew, it talks about the repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Come on now, we need to repent. We need to get things right. Why? Because that causes great rejoicing in heaven. Great rejoicing when people give their lives to Jesus Christ. When they come to Christ and give their life to him, there is great uh, rejoicing. Then in Acts 7, 49 says, heaven again, he says here, it's like in Isaiah, Heaven is here, is my throne, and earth is my footstool. footstool. Uh, what house will be built for me, says the Lord, and, or what is the place of my rest? <clears throat> you know, sometimes we don't realize, but we're also, 
you know, a, a tabernacle for the Lord. We're also to be a vessel of his presence. And, uh, you know, people say, well, go look around the world. Where Where is the presence of God? Where can we go find God, <laughs> you know, you know? But we don't realize the presence of God, the beginning of his eternal kingdom, is in each one of us. Think about that. You're, we, you, me, are a picture, are a part of God's heavenly kingdom. What it means to come together in unity and harmony. What it means to have peace. What it means to have, you know, the presence of God with us. That's, that's heavenly. That's an anointed place, but it's also that anointing can be within us. Then in Revelation, one more verse before we go on and talk a little bit more. Revelation twenty one three, right at the end of the the epistles and the, at the end of the Bible, and says, "And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God. Here's what we're just talking about: is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people." God himself will be with them and be their God. So hear a voice from heaven coming from the very throne room of God, coming from the very presence of God, that if we will repent and 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 uh, prepare ourselves for the kingdom of heaven, if we will just believe in Jesus Christ and realize that the God, God himself, the heaven itself is the throne room of God. And out of that throne, you know... <clears throat> Again, this revelation verse, just, I just love it. Why? Because it shows us how much God loves us. I don't know if you've got a, an understanding yet about these 10 points, but every one of them are relational. Every one of them took place. Every one of them is as an event that has happened to build relationship in me, you and me. And here, do we see it? What's the relationship? Why, you know, because we are made in, Christ, uh, in God's image and likeness. We were created by God. We were created so we could worship and praise God. We were created to have fellowship with God. And here, God Almighty himself, and I, I, I haven't even comprehended yet all of it, God Almighty from himself, is speaking from the throne room. Now, you need to understand this. And if you look at the story of Esther, you would understand the power comes out of the throne room where the king is, from the scepter. Because the scepter that the king has is all authority. The throne room, the, the, the commands that come out of there are unbreakable commands. And often, if they're not fulfilled properly, it meant the death sentence. Esther knew that. But here, out of that miraculous place, not the earthly uh, throne room, but the heavenly throne room, we, we hear that John says, And I heard a loud voice. Isn't it interesting? A loud voice from heaven. <clears throat> Did you get that? A loud voice from heaven. That means God speaks to us from heaven. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Think about that. God is speaking, and he's speaking to us from heaven. And here uh, John says, and there was a loud voice in a particular, in the moment of time, uh, that God, and that's uh, maybe that's why we've called this Christmas book, in the fullness of time. In the fullness of time, a loud voice comes from heaven saying, Behold. And the idea of behold means to look at this. Look at it. You know, take time to look at it. And what are we to look at? He says, the tabernacle of God is with man. The presence of God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and then also the Son of Man is with us. And isn't it interesting that in, in the Christmas time, one of the names of Jesus Christ is Emmanuel. And what does that mean? God with us. <clears throat> and here, John 21, 3 says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with us, and he will dwell with them. Hallelujah. I thank God that he at age 17, he came into my life and he dwells within my life. He's changed me from the inside out. He'll change you from the inside out. He comes and dwells with you and empowers you. And this voice from heaven is trying to get us to realize that. The voice from heaven, God Almighty himself says, The tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. 
Oh, I thank God I'm a child of God. Do you thank God that you're a child of God? God himself will be with them and be their God. Think about that. Just think about that right now. You know, we don't have to drag down God from heaven. A voice from heaven has already said, God's with you. Invite him into your life. God wants to fill you. Invite him into your life. God wants to cleanse you. Repent of your sins. I mean, it's just an amazing when you think about what, what God is what He is shouting. He's shouting a voice from heaven. Come on now, people. The tabernacle of God is with you. You know, He has come and dwelt amongst us. That's why when we sing that song, Emmanuel, you know, God is with us. And that's what God is confirming here through the Apostle John in the book of Revelation. And we need to get that. So when Jesus began to talk to the disciples in John chapter 14, and he said, you know, disciples, don't worry, because he was telling them, I'm going to leave soon. We talked about that on Wednesday. I'm going to leave soon. And they were starting to get nervous. They were starting to get worried. But he goes and in John 14, verses 1 to 3, he says, I'm going to be leaving soon, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. And then he tells them how, how he's going to come back. But he also, we get hints of how beautiful heaven is, you know, about the gates and the streets of gold and, and how everything's going to look and mansions that are being prepared for our re re uh, arrival. Can you imagine that? Those of you watching and are believing, believing this morning, God is preparing for you. And it isn't going to be some little one-room apartment. There are going to be mansions on the streets of gold. And said, well, how, how, how big is this kingdom of heaven? It's big. It's big. You know, it's going to contain all of us. We're going to walk on streets of gold. We're going to have mansions. We're going to be in the very presence. We're going to celebrate and, 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 and feast together with our Lord. Can you, that, isn't that good news? You know, isn't that something to get where, you know, for the very first time, we're going to see Jesus face to face? You know, why don't we tell these things to people? Why don't we sit in the coffee shop today and say, can I tell you something? What's that? There's a real burden in my heart. What's, what do you want to say, Jim? I just want to talk to you about heaven. Oh, they'll say, oh, you, you're one of those Bible thumpers. I don't want to be a Bible thumper. I just want to tell you where I'm looking forward to going, where I can't wait to get there. Amen. And, you know, but the question on people's mind is, do they believe? Are we a Pharisee or a Sadducee or are we a believer in Jesus Christ? You know, how these groups fought over legalistically. They were trying to fight over us, you know. It reminds me of scientists all the time and, and science. Science is trying to prove. I remember the, the first Apollo flight and everything. People were nervous because when they went up to the moon, would they enter into the kingdom of heaven? Would they be, you know, and one of the persons said, well, we saw no God up there because we were in the heavens. Yeah, well, you were in the space, but you weren't in the heavens. You weren't in the throne room of God. You know, but they were trying to mock God. See, we got on a spaceship and we went up there and there was no God. Oh, God, have mercy on us for our foolishness, where we think we are wise, but in many ways we're very, very foolish. And to think of those kinds of physical things. This is a miraculous, a, a, a beautiful place where the God's presence there. And, he, and Jesus used this often to tell and to encourage people. Often, you know, and, and they tried to use this doctrine about heaven, you know, uh, to try to trip Jesus up. And then they tried to use this doctrine about, see, he's like God. He's saying he's God. He's saying he has the kingdom. You know, let's put him to death because he's proclaiming to be the son of God and he has a kingdom. Well, I mean, the, the, laugh, la the last laugh is not for the Pharisees, the Sadducees and the high priests. The last smile and the sadness smile, I guess you could be say, is that there is a heaven. And we need to be out there telling people about it. Come on now. Can you imagine if we could just go walking around in the mall and have a black card on us and say, I believe in heaven. I'm believing soon and very soon. Our king is coming back from heaven. I believe soon and very soon we're going to be in heaven. Those of us who believe in Jesus Christ. And that's why I think the Holy Spirit was trying to say Matthew, get Matthew to tell us over and over again about the kingdom of heaven. 
But the disciples, they didn't kind of get this. They were, you know, okay, we, we like it better, Lord, when you are walking with us physically, they were thinking. We like that. And then we like it better if we could just really understand, like, is there a train or is there an, you know, of course, they didn't have airplanes back then. What is the way? Remember Thomas said, how do we get to heaven? <laughs> Jesus said, I'll, I'll tell you, it's very simple. What's that? Thomas said to Jesus. Just believe that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. This is that verse that we quote over and over again that so many people know John 14, 6 is in response to the question of the disciples of how do we get to heaven? Come on now, those of you who are listening around the world, do you want to know how to get to heaven? Believe that Jesus is the way. He's going to show us the way. Believe that Jesus is the truth. He has spoken the truth about heaven and that Jesus is the life where he is going to show that through his death and resurrection, he is going to lead us. He's going to come back and get us and lead us into the glorious kingdom, lead us into the presence of his heaven. But we need to understand that Jesus did that as our redeemer, as our deliverer. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father, now interceding on behalf of us, getting things ready. And as the, there will be a time that all will be called up into heaven, where the judgment seat of God is, where the Lamb's book of life in Revelation twenty one twenty seven says will be opened up. And there will be a time that will be determined whether we can, you know, we're called up into the heavenlies, but there'll be a time determined whether we will have be able to go into heaven. A big difference. You know, in Revelation 3.10 talked about the turmoils and the battles, the things that were going on. Even Paul himself, when he talked about putting on the full armor of God. You know, we fight not against principalities and powers, things here on earth. But there is a warring in heaven that's taking place. The final war against Satan and the, and the beast and all that, you know, is over the heavenly kingdom. But our God reigns. Jesus reigns. The archangels will have victory over Satan and all his hosts. What a wonderful time that's going to be. And there's going to be a time with all eternity. And so God is saying to us, hey, get ready. Get ready because right now we're in captivity. As it were, as it were, we're in captivity to this old body. We're in captivity to the limitation of our mind. But soon we're going to be set free because the, the son of righteousness is going to come amongst us. The, the deliverer and the redeemer is, is not only going to be in us through faith in Jesus Christ, but also we will be seeing him face to face in his presence. Oh, if you could just have time to study about heaven. There is so many scriptures. But Satan himself wants to try to deceive us. And we need to understand as a disciple, there is a real heaven. <laughs> and there is a real goal. And that's to take us there. There is a real purpose is that we proclaim and ask and tell others about the kingdom of heaven. And that, you know, that our flesh and blood, you know, are able to overcome not and because of who we are, but because of who he is. You know, and, and it is a place where we will stand before the Lord and, and be judged, yes, but there's a place where we will then sit down. You know, so often we're, we're, we are concerned about judgment, and we should be concerned about judgment. But that's, again, you know, that's part of what's taking place. That's part of the journey. But the end good news is that we get to sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb. You know, I in this gospel booklet, uh, the last chapter in here, I had the artist draw. I don't know if you can see this last picture here that is in the Good News book, and people are beginning to enter in. But what is what is inside there? It's the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's, you know, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to any kind of wonderful banquet, but this is going to be a banquet upon, above all banquets. It's going to be a time when we gather together. We may even be eating our plates of gold. We may even have fork, spoons, and knives. Or if you don't believe in fork, spoons, and knives, okay, Cohen, maybe gold chopsticks. I don't know, you know what we're all going to be eating and how we're going to be eating. But it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. The presence of God is going to be there. There's going to be great rejoicing. 
the fullness of God's presence is going to be in the kingdom of heaven. You know, the, the marriage supper of the Lamb. You know, the heaven, there is going to be no more sickness, no more death, no more being an invalid or whatever it may be. It's over! And I don't know why we don't get out and talk about that. And we, you know, oh, we always do it at funerals. Well, we'll talk about heaven and we'll try to preach people into heaven. But the thing is, I think we need to, the biggest testimony that, that God has is us, that he is in us, he's empowering us, he's filling us, so we can get out there with the good news of Jesus Christ. And one of the points, the, the last point of the good news of Jesus Christ, that we are going to be with him in heaven for all eternity. And Satan wants to try to stop that. He wants to try to get us to believe in his lies. He wants us to try to get to the place, oh, we're not going to believe in what God has us. But the Bible is a book that preaches clearly about heaven, about the kingdom of heaven. And we got to believe no matter what the voice is, people will say, well, you know, you're just going to die. You know, I, I, I feel sad for you Buddhist people. You know, you're on this round and around circle and, and you try to get the right karma and you, and you die and you come back again and you die and you come back again and you try to get up to the place and finally have, you know what, you know what their utopia is? Poof, they're finally gone. <laughs> like, no, that's not my end of the story. My end of the story is I get to go in with the new garments. I get to go in in full healing, in full presence of God, face to face, in the presence of my Creator. And I get to dwell with Him for all eternity. For all eternity. Isn't that amazing? That's what it's all about. And so as we conclude our 10th point today, my challenge to you, you know, that if we would realize that through the blood of the Lamb, through the death and resurrection, His ascension, His second coming back again, is leading everything, leading all of us to heaven. Are you getting it yet? I, I, have I got you to move a little bit? Have I got you just to have a smile on your face a little bit? Have I got you to get a little bit Pentecostal and say, praise the Lord? <laughs> you know? I would love it if Christians would all come to the mall today and just start, you know, walking around the mall. No one could stop them or on the bank or go on the, into the into the streets and just say, praise the Lord. Well, what are you praising the Lord about? I'm going to heaven. What about you? That's not very hard evangelism, is it? You know, we always wonder, what are we going to say? What are we going to tell people if we go out and talk to them? You know, I can give you 10 good things to talk to people about. Memorize those 10 points. And just go around and start talking about it. You know, you know they may want to lock you up and think, oh, you've lost your mind. You're crazy. You're fanatical. They're going to, you know, they've been doing that for thousands of years. Why should they stop now? You know, they're going to lock you up and, and they're going to haul you away, maybe put you in a mental hospital and say, this person is always talking about heaven. Why not? Why can't we be talking about heaven? Because it's a glorious place to be and we want as many people. That's why we're doing what we're doing because we're trusting in the last days that the kingdom of God will continue to be built. It's not over until it's over. And we want to see as many people enter into the presence of Jesus Christ, into his, into his very presence, into the very pre power of his Holy Spirit, to become that their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So when, when they go down through the scrolls, they'll say, yeah, your name is here. Enter on in. Oh, I mean, aren't you going to be glad when your name is written there? Aren't you be glad that knowing that God is looking for that one who will give his life to Christ, that's why we're out there, you know, doing what we're doing each day. We're praying, God, bring us to the table in the mall, that one. That one we can encourage, that one child. You know, I'm always so sad when parents drag their kids. The kids want the books. The kids want to know more about God. And the parents drag them on by and say, oh, you don't need to know that garbage. You don't need to know that religion. You don't need to know that stuff. And I just say, boy, you parents are going to be judged for what you're doing because you're holding back your children from the place of entering into the fullness and the power of the Holy Spirit, from the place of being able to go to heaven for all eternity 
You know, and I think of that often. I think about what God wants to give us. Are, are you getting excited at all about these 10 points? Well, our last thing is the disciple creed that we have for us, where I say, now this brings us to the vital question. Do I, as a disciple, believe and commit myself to this 10th point? Do I believe and commit myself to this 10 point, to the gospel creed, which states, I do believe and confess in the literal place called heaven. The literal place, not a, a fictional place or some place off that we, you know, cannot touch or get a hold of or any. No, a literal place called heaven where all will be judged, a place where the Lamb's book of life is kept, a place where one day as a disciple I will go, a place of where there is no more sickness or death, a place where I will become a new creation with a new name, a place where we will come face to face with our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Redeemer for all who will believe in Him, and that we will gather together with Him at the marriage supper of the Lamb, worshiping and adoring our King Jesus for all eternity. Can I read that again? Can you make this commitment today? Can we say, I do believe? Where we start off, I do believe and confess in a literal place called heaven. Where all will be judged. A place where the Lamb's book of life is kept. A place where one day as a disciple I will go. Praise God, I'm looking forward to that. A place where there is no more sickness and no more death. I thank God. That's where Irene is right now. A place where there is no more sickness, no more death, no more pain, no more trials. A place where I will become a new creation. Oh God, I thank God for that. You know, this old body is going to be made over new. I thank God he's going to give me a new name. But the day I'm looking forward to is when I come and I stand face to face with my Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. You know, do I believe this? Do I believe that he is my redeemer and that soon he's coming to get us and bring us to heaven? And after we pass through those things that are preceding the fullness of heaven, we're going to enter into the marriage supper of the Lamb. You know, and those of you who won't be, who are not Pentecostal here on earth, I think you will be Pentecostal in heaven. Oh, you know, you just ruined it, Jim. Why, what do you mean by that? I think if you're going to be in heaven, I don't think you're going to be sitting at the back of, of the gates, you know, just entering the pro the gates. Could I sit in the back? <laughs> I think there's going to be standing room only at the front. Why? Because <laughs> we want to meet Jesus face to face. And not only that, we're not going to have our arms crossed and try to say, convince me, we're going to have our hands up. Thing. I think we'll be doing a little jig. We'll be all excited because we're in the heaven. That's what I mean by, you know, we always talk about those weird Pentecostals. Well, I think there's going to be a Pentecostal type spirit upon all of us because we're just going to be rejoicing so much being in heaven, praising God, giving thanks for who Jesus Christ is, thanking God for even being there. Amen. What a day that will be. Hallelujah. Well, I think we said enough today, but today I hope that you will take, you will get a hold. You know, I wish you'd come into the mall, the Yosef Close, and get this good book, this book, this book called The Good News of Hope. Put it in your purse. Put it inside your jacket. Carry it around. You know, take one chapter every day and say, I'm going to meditate on, you know, what it means, this one point about the good news of Jesus Christ and what he has done. If we could just take these 10 points and they're listed for us in, our, in the, the uh, Disciples' Principles of Faith. It's a little chart that we've made up and that we can pray through and believe and just let it, you know, get into it and let it get into us. Get into the Word and let the Word get into us. Amen. So, Today, as we conclude this portion of the gospel of Christ, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, that principle, this is just principle number two we've done all these days concerning principle number two about heaven. And please, 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 I, I just hope, you know, pass it on. Pass these, these 10 or 12 videos on. Say, you got to listen to this guy. You gotta, you gotta hear it. Not that you gotta listen to me, but listen to what the Holy Spirit is trying to say about these ten points, about these good news. What He's trying to say, you who are preachers, you know, get up this Sunday and and and, and tell people about the glorious kingdom of heaven, 
And where we're headed toward, I, I, you know, I believe there's going to be some excitement. I believe we could catch this. If we could just get these 10 points and react to them physically, emotionally, and spiritually, we would see revival break out amongst us. Because when you get it, and you realize that you're part of this wonderful, wonderful good news, is not only that Jesus has come to be the good news, he has come to give him the good news, give us the good news, and he has come that we could be part in relationship together with that good news. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And Lord, we thank you for these 10 points that you spoke into my heart many years ago when I was over in Myanmar and said, write this down. Write this down. You got to get this, Jim. And I thank you that you've given it to me and I've had the opportunity to see it over and over again. This is good news. And Lord, it's not just good news about us, but it's good news about what can be within us. And so, Lord, I thank you for all these men and women and children on this uh, first uh, day of December, sweet December, for those who will be celebrating. And, Lord, I pray right now, I lift up all those who are going through so much struggles and strife and heartaches in Myanmar. Oh, God, we don't even know. We don't know that what's going on. It never hits the news. But, Lord, I lift up our brothers and sisters that they would just uh, experience the fullness of your good news. Lord, the fullness of their good news in the midst of, of, of what's taking place, the battles, the war, the explosions, everything else that Satan is trying to bring about and to try to rob us of the good news. Lord, no, we've been set free. The captive have been set free. The good news has set us free, O oh God. And Lord, that we are free indeed. And so, Father, I pray for everywhere all of us go this day that you will give an opportunity to share some portion of this good news with someone else today. And we just give you thanks. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Are you excited about that? Thanks for joining us. Uh, sorry that we have to do things a little bit differently, but we're going to be in the mall seven days a week. Uh, or almost seven days, probably six six days a week, and we're going to be out there telling people, handing out materials, telling people about the birth, you know. That's why in this booklet, Remember to Pray, there's 20,000 of these going out in the next week. Remember to Pray, or almost 20,000. And that, that's why we ended this the book on the, on the good news of Jesus Christ's birth. The last chapter is that we wanted to, yeah, Jesus came to the earth to be a baby, but for a purpose, to die on a cross, to be in a tomb, to be resurrected, and to ascend on high, and to come back again. Oh, that's what people need to hear in the midst of all this. Amen. So God bless you. We love you. And we will be coming to you probably awful, often throughout the, the next month. But it's going to be sporadic here. It could be in the evening, could be in midday, it could be at noon. It, it's going to come to you whenever uh, what we have time. It may come to you from the mall. It may come to you from our office. It may come to you from our car. Whatever. It may just come wherever. But we're going to want to share and continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to share with you basic little quick snippets of things that hopefully will empower you and build you up. Amen. Continue to pray for Colwyn and I. Pray for all those who are in the office. Pray for all those who are in the front lanes. Pray for the team that God is raising up. And may the Lord use each one of us for his glory. We love you. Thanks for joining us today. And we'll talk to you again soon on a various other, other ways. But just, you know, be happy today. <laughs> because you just heard some really good news. That if you could get it from here down into here. Woo-wee. It's going to touch it really deep within your heart. And it's going to bring a smile of peace upon your face. Amen. I got to stop. God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you again soon. Amen. Bye-bye for now.